Welcome to another episode of Tweepers Tech. Uh, today we're going to be looking at why I went from this Galaxy S22 Ultra to the Google Pixel Pro. Uh, sorry, the Pixel 7 Pro. Um, you may recall I've had issues around GPS with my Galaxy devices. Not just the S22 Ultra, but before that the Note 20 Ultra, and even before that the Note 10 Plus. Apart from those GPS issues, I've always enjoyed using Samsung Galaxy devices. My first smartphone was a Google Nexus S, and that was when Samsung teamed up with Google for the first time, I believe. Um, and then they made the Galaxy devices, and then I got introduced to the Note devices, and I've bought every Note that was available in the UK, including the Note Edge, and the Note 20 Ultra was my last one, and then obviously the S22 Ultra was the obvious one to go for. Um, I think I've always preferred Samsung devices over Google devices, although I've never actually owned one, because I've always felt their features were richer, and I've always felt they've done a better job with Android than Google themselves. Uh, but I thought this time I'm going to give it a shot because I was having a bit of frustration with the GPS. That was the only issue I had with Google, uh, sorry, with uh, Galaxy devices. But it was enough to me to think, you know what, well, I'm going to try something different. I'm not going to jump to Apple because it's not for me. I don't think it is anyway. But why don't we try something slightly different? So that's why we've gone with the Pixel 7 Pro. I've heard really good reviews, I've heard the camera's really good. And you know they've really stepped up their game this year, so I thought let's give it a shot. Now in the box, you can imagine as most manufacturers are following the trend of minimal, no power block, uh, no headphones, no real accessories other than this device that allows you to transfer data from one data uh, one phone to another. I've done it with my Galaxy device to a Google device, so it works for alternative brands as well as Google devices. We've got the Type C cable, standard size that should be longer really. Uh, but it's what you'd expect and just some thick booklet I was going to read that that's all you get in the box let's have a look at the device I have used this before I just thought I'd take that off um, so here we have the Pixel 7 Pro as you can see I've gone for a very similar uh, colour variant to my note I kind of like the white flavour it's really nice it does feel really good um, you know screen size is very similar. I think there's more curves on the Pixel 7. Look at the Type-C ports, SIM tray. Uh, the main difference is the volume rocker is at the bottom rather than the top. That took, that did take me a while to get used to and I do prefer uh, the other way around. Obviously the camera is very different. I'm not, not really clued up on how cameras work but yeah it does work differently and I have had a little play around with it this week. If I would put both devices together with my home screens, you can see the brightness actually seems a bit higher on the uh, Pixel Pro. I was quite surprised. I've got them both on max uh, max brightness there, as you can see. But they're both on um, adaptive brightness. I think I've chosen natural for them both. Um, but yeah, the display is really good on this phone. You can't fault that. Um, but I've had a chance to play with it. The things you know I do like about this device, you know, it is quick really is snappy you know you've got Android 13 it's all pure there's no bloatware yeah they do put additional apps in there but it's really quick I don't know if it's as quick as this device now bear in mind this is a UK version so it's not got a snapdragon processor but the uh, Xenos processor is slightly more improved than it has been on previous generations um, like I said it does feel quite nice quite quick um, you know getting used to these new quick shortcuts they're quite cool um, what do I like? The uh, double tap, that's pretty cool. So you can, you may be aware that you can allocate that motion to opening up any apps and I thought it'd be useful in using that as a torch. So that's something I really like. Um, but if I'm honest, that's about it. Um, and, and there's a, re a range of reasons why I'm, I'm not completely satisfied. I'm a little bit disappointed. Things like this Android widget you can't move it, even if you click on preferences, it doesn't give you the option to move it. Uh, sometimes it doesn't even work. See, I've just clicked on that. It's really delayed. It did come up just then, but that should be working straight away. So that's not very good. Um, this widget here, I think you can adjust, that's all good. But this one as well, you can't adjust or move that one. So for a Google phone, I'm just I'm really disappointed with the um, restriction on customization. Yeah, you've got the Google feed here, that's nice. Um, 
but I like to have folders with my apps um, on the actual draw screen. I know you can do it on a home screen, uh, but as you can see on this device, I like to have all my apps in folders. And not everyone does that, but I do. Um, so it's disappointing they've taken that. Um, having access to my favorite apps, once again, Samsung do a great job of this. This quick panel here, I, I hope they keep this. I've used this since the Note Edge came out, and it's really useful. Um, there is nothing like that on here. There is a shortcut to put on here to do actual actions, but it doesn't give you the access to put favorite apps on one side or just have quick access to them. And for that reason, I realize how much I miss using a Samsung device because they've always been known for their features. They've got so many good features. Um, the GPS issue actually is, that, is for some reason worse on this phone. Bear in mind it's a Google device and Google Maps works worse on this than it does on that. Um, there's other things I don't like. Um, you can't toggle NFC on and off. It looks like NFC is always on and you can access your settings to turn it off but there's no shortcut. I've looked for them and I still can't find it anywhere. Um, what else is there? The picture gallery, um, I'm used to using the Samsung gallery which is really customizable, it recognizes your folders. I transferred all my data on this and all my folders went into the camera folder and I'm just not a fan of, what is it called, Google Pics? Where's it gone? I just, it does look quite tidy but it doesn't recognize my folders and I guess, you know, it, there's nothing really wrong with it, but if you're used to a particular type of gallery, it's hard to adjust to a new one. Um, apps that I'm using a bit more often now is I'm using the Google Calendar rather than the Samsung one. I think that's a little bit better. Um, but in short, I'm not going to do a proper review. I'm actually going to send this back because I just I found it was too restricted. You know, bear in mind it's an Android device. I was expecting more freedom as much on a Galaxy device, but it's just not there camera also pictures look good but because it's using software to process the pictures there's a delay in some of the pictures being taken and I, I, I can't handle a camera being that slow so for me that was a bit disappointing with the camera even with the uh, features with the um, eraser mode and the unblurring mode they're quite cool but they're more novelty features um, I'm just not that impressed of it it's a nice device it's a shame I was really looking forward to enjoying using this device um, but Apart from a couple of features, I'm just not that satisfied. But since then, I've actually gone back to the Galaxy device, had a firmware update, and it seems like my GPS seems to be working better. So, I think we know we're going to stick with this boy, and we're going to send the Pixel 7 Pro back. Um, that's about it. Stay tuned to my next episode. Thanks for tuning.